So, meantime, investors waking up to a sea of red. So what should investors do with their portfolio today? Well, Mohamed Alarian joins us right now on the Squawk Newsline. He has been warning people not to buy the dips. And good morning to you, Mohamed. That has been the right call thus far. I don't even know if uh, what today is going to become will be called a dip. But how are you thinking about it this morning? So today will be messy. Andrew, to state the obvious, it will be messy because we have lost basically all our anchors. We lost the economic anchor with the coronavirus. We've lost the policy anchor with people losing confidence in the Fed's ability to turn things around. And, and over the weekend, we lost a market anchor with OPEC swing producer role right. going out the window. So this is going to be really treacherous for a while. Um, I would advise most retail investors to stay on the sideline, not panic. There will be opportunities, but they're not now. Okay, but they're they're so not now. Why, Mohammed? What, what, what else do you think is coming? Because what you learn very quickly um, when you spend time on the trade floor is to respect technicals. Um, technicals have a way of overwhelming market action and can take you well beyond the fundamentals, meaning that unless you get a circuit breaker, and we can talk about what a circuit breaker looks like, but unless you get a circuit breaker, technicals will feed onto themselves for a while, but, making any drop right. e exaggerate. Mohammed, are we be, are we beyond the fundamentals at this point? Do you think this is um, a technical issue? Because I am not so sure about that. No, no, no. You've heard me say over and over again, initial conditions matter. We've elevated asset prices well beyond fundamentals. If the buffer erodes, which was confidence in sense that, that the market is going to drop another 20 or 30 percent, how should you be thinking about that if you're an investor out there? It depends what I have. So if I have companies with fundamentally strong balance sheets, cash positions, and good, good business leadership, they will navigate this. This is not 2008. This is not a Great Depression. This is not a paralysis of the, the payments and settlement system. This is a nasty price correction and an economic slowdown. So if I have good companies, they will navigate this. If, however, I have invested in high-yield companies with debt sustainability issues, then I'm looking at the prospect of potential defaults. And remember, the problem here is that you don't get much liquidity to reposition. Well, how do you think, though, about the 10-year being as low as it is? I know a lot of people who are doing a lot of refinancing. There's a lot of uh, deal-making <coughs> taking place. How much will oh, that help? Look, I mean, the good news, and there is good news in this, is when we turn the technicals around, we're going to be talking about the following. Record low mortgage rates that put more money in people's pocket. Record low lending. Very low energy prices. That means we, we, the consumer will have more money available for other things. So when we turn the technicals around, it just won't happen immediately, Andrew. But when we do, you will find that you have the conditions for not just a bottoming up process, but quite a pickup in economic activity. But we also need, and that's the other thing I've been stressing, <coughs> two medical advances because that's going to be key to establishing a bottom to these economic sudden stop that have been triggered advances? by the virus. What are the two advances you want? Simply one that makes you and I confident that the virus is not going to spread in an indiscriminate way. And two, a second advance, hopefully through a vaccine, that makes you and I confident uh, that the I chance... I think both of those advances are, are, are like a year away at the earliest, no? I don't think they're a year away. I think you'll find that, that human ingenuity, when needed, can come up with things much, much faster. We're learning a lot about this. But yes, the, the next few weeks are going to see even more economic sudden stops. You know, I tell people, when you have an interconnected economy like ours, it is not easy to restart it. Even if we declare the all clear, the restart alone is going to take weeks. Hey, Mohammed, you said prices could drop 20 to 30 percent. You mean from here or you mean from where we started? So, so definitely from where we started. Um, 
that that for me is we're going to be fifteen percent by the end of today. The rate, the rate we're going correct, on. correct. And and remember, last year we as investor lived the dream. We we were living the dream. We got thirty percent returns on a passive S and P. We got paid for holding risk free, risk mitigating government bonds, and we got no volatility. I kept on telling people when you live the dream like that, realize that this is pretty special. Don't think that it can play on and on. So, so we can unwind some of these artificial elements that have been put into markets by continuous central bank support. Mohammed, uh, Jason Schreiner, I was wondering if you could comment on gold um, and, and what you think <clears throat> that means. One interpretation you could have is that central bankers are going to overdo it in terms of fiscal stimulus that you'll have in an odd way a form of MMT that, uh, uh, as a result of this, and you're going to spend more, or it's just in a, in a world where you have negative interest rates, this is gold actually has a positive carry. So how, how would you interpret the, the increase in the price of gold? So I think it's both. I think we will have a, quote, whatever it takes policy response. As governments catch up, they're going to throw everything at this, and central banks will as well. So we will have a whatever-it-takes policy approach. It won't have an immediate economic impact because you and I will not go back on a cruise if the loans are cheap and if we get a tax credit. We're just not going to do that. Okay? But it will put a ton of fuel in the system that's going to wait for an economic bottling out. But I also think you said the other thing, which is people are looking around and saying, where's the risk-free asset? And they're getting nervous about how low yields are. And gold is looking a lot more attractive.